Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> So my name is Kristina Nitsarotaru. I'm a professor at Northeastern University. And on behalf of the organizing committee of NDSS 2024, it is my great pleasure to tell you welcome. Uh, we have uh, a conference like this will not happen without the support of many people. Uh, this includes the TPC chairs, chairs for the workshops, chairs for the poster selection. This year we have also an artifact evaluation. Uh, and of course the uh, team from Internet Society who has been supporting NDSS for over 30 years. Today uh, I'm happy to tell you that we, oops, the slides don't seem to be moving. No, no, here they're moving, they're not moving. Oh, now they're moving, great. So uh, we have a, a great program uh, that we prepared for you. Uh, in the next few uh, days, 140 papers are going to be presented. So this is a, a record for NDSS. Um, we have two fantastic keynotes, uh, Meredith Whitaker, the president of Signal Foundation, and Herbert Boss, a professor at uh, Frey uh, University Amsterdam, uh, graciously accepted our invitation. Uh, I am personally looking forward to these talks. Um, also, uh, NDSS continues to support eight collocated events. Several of them took place yesterday, and the rest are going to take place on Friday. Um, and uh, again, poster session as in previous years. Uh, this year, we're also uh, going to announce a Test of Time Award. This is something that we do every few years. It's going to happen in the next uh, few minutes, so please don't, uh, don't leave. Um, and also, we have two new uh, activities that we are starting at NDSS. One is artifact evaluation. Matthias is going to tell you much more about it. Uh, and also, we are very lucky that we are able to offer an NSF office hours. Uh, Cliff Wang, a program manager at NSF Satsi, is going to be here. So if you have any questions about uh, security-sponsored research by NSF, please stop by. Uh, of course, this conference will not happen without the support of our sponsors. Uh, as you can see, they're very, uh, uh, they, they, they're very uh, diverse. Uh, End Group, Google, TikTok, Futureway, IBM, Qualcomm, uh, Arizona State, uh, and also uh, several sponsors for the vehicle sec event that took place yesterday. And I wanted to leave you with this picture. Uh, this is what we did last summer, or I should say last spring, when NDSS celebrated 30 years of existence. Uh, if this is your first NDSS, I hope that this becomes your home in February, and you're going to come back every year, as many of us here. And with this, I want to um, invite Matthias, uh, one of the TPC chairs, to tell you what is the recipe to get papers into NDSS. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Uh, thanks. For, first, a big hand for the organi organization committee who did an awesome job at getting us all settled here. As, I, as I've learned in the last two years by looking a bit behind the curtain, organizing a conference is a shit ton of work. And um, you'll appreciate it when you are at this position and figure out how much uh, hand-holding, details, uh, last second emergency handling is actually required. Uh, I'm looking forward to everything running smoothly this year, uh, thanks to this amazing group of people that worked really, really hard behind the scenes and uh, next to the scenes. And um, let me talk a little bit about the paper selection process. This is one of the most exciting parts of uh, running a conference because we as the, the PC community, the technical PC chairs and the technical program committee can select the papers that will be presented. Uh, first, I would like to give a shout out to my amazing uh, co-chair, Christina. Let me see if I can loop her in, um, if the video, if she has a video or not. Christina, can you turn on your video? I see her on Zoom. She's not, let's see. No video. Let's see if it works later. I'll get back to this in a second. Um, she unfortunately couldn't be here despite doing a massive amount of, uh, um, of work for the conference. Um, we always communicated 
via Slack, uh, messaging, Zoom calls, um, you name it. But a little bit over a week ago, uh, uh, there was a big change in her private life. And uh, she gave birth to her, uh, to a kid, and um, therefore couldn't, couldn't make it here in person. Uh, I would still like to give her a very big hand of applause for all the work that she did. And and just doing an amazing job in general, uh, juggling all the different things in, in parallel. So thank you very much for, for that, Christina. Um, this is a, at least a two-person job, and apparently a three-person job for, for a very long, long time. Um, you may have looked outside. I think we can, we can say and we can agree that NDSS is the best of the top tier conferences, especially regarding the location and if you look outside. If you're into running, we also go run in the morning. So if you want to join us tomorrow at 6.30 in the lobby, feel free to join us on a nice run uh, along the bay. But we're not here to talk about the beautiful weather in San Diego. We're spending most of our time actually here inside the, uh, the, the catamaran in different rooms to talk about papers, talk about research, form new research co connections, and also um, listen to great and amazing talks. So let me give you some statistics uh, about the paper selection process and how we made this, uh, this, this great program this year. And I hope you agree. Uh, first off, NDSS is growing quite a bit, right? So these are the statistics over the last couple of years. Um, we had almost 700 papers submitted. And if you draw a curve, I'm not sure you, you're, like, how good you are at statistics and numbers, but there's a, an implication of where this is heading, right? Um, this has been seen by other top tier conferences, and we'll have to figure out how to handle this massive kind of growth um, that we are observing at all of the different top tier conferences, especially going forward, scaling beyond uh, whatever we see here. Now, acceptance rate has been at 20.2% uh, this year, which is in line with what we, we had in previous years. Uh, we put a lot of effort into making this uh, more positive or trying to massively improve the, the positivity of the, the, the reviewing process, just to give authors more um, more feedback on their papers, on their details, and also encouraging the PC committee to like, discuss the paper, give feedback, and be positive about it. Now, 20% may not seem too positive if you consider 100%, because the majority of papers is still rejected, right? But we are trying to push on, on the positivity and giving authors good feedback. If you break this down into different categories, right? So about half the papers we managed to reject in the first round. We did two rounds of reviewing. Um, and then another quarter, a bit more than a quarter, was rejected in the second round, thereby distributing and balancing the, the workload of the, of the PC quite a bit. We had 43 straight accepts, um, up from a much lower value in previous years. So we're kind of proud of pushing this, uh, this accept category so that uh, sometimes um, we can agree, or we should agree more often that a paper is worthy of acceptance, and we don't need to punish uh, authors further in letting them go through an unnecessary additional review cycle. Uh, if there's sm small things to change, we can go through a minor revision with shepherding or major revisions. For major revisions, compared to the others, I think uh, NDSS has established this great way of allowing a 45-day major revision cycle with very, uh, very close interaction with the uh, with the shepherd, where if you are an author, you can work with the shepherd on improving your paper, ask for clarification, and get feedback along the way. And this leads to an amazing rate of 98% uh, acceptance for major revisions. Um, it's a small, tight, uh, tight schedule, right? It's only 45 days. So the major revision requirements are usually more tight. Um, and the interaction with the shepherd allows you as an author to actually push forward and make sure that this actually works out, uh, works out fairly well in the majority of times. Let's have a look at um, the, the review distribution for accepted and rejected papers. And uh, on the left-hand side, I'm showing you the accepted papers. On the right-hand side, I'm showing you the rejected papers. And um, 
we had reject, weak reject, weak accept, accept, and strong accept categories. And there's a clear distinction in a signal. So if you're into machine learning, right, there's a, there's a clear signal that can be observed um, where you can pick out uh, very opaque or false. Maybe this is a, a takeaway note for if you're getting reviews for a, for a rebuttal or whatnot. Uh, new this year, we started an artifact evaluation process uh, for the first time at NDSS as a systems conference. I think it's extremely important to actually evaluate our artifacts, make them openly accessible to the research community, to build upon it, and to actually work with the, uh, validate the proofs uh, on those. Daniele Cono Delia uh, was the Artifact Evaluation Chair. Um, we chaired together Euro the Eurosys Artifact Evaluation last year. Uh, he did an amazing job, and I would like to give him a very big hand of applause for doing the Artifact Evaluation for NDSS. <laughs> Are you in the room? Can you stand up? Yes, he's over there. Thank you very much for the amazing work. So out of the uh, 140 papers that we accepted, um, 38 um, were submitted for artifact evaluation. One major revision was unfortunately rejected. Uh, 36 out of them got the available batch, right? That the source code was sufficiently uh, available. 36 the functional batch, uh, 26 the reproduced batch. So uh, for about 67% of the uh, papers that 87% uh, of the papers that requested it uh, got actually the fully reproduced, uh, reproduced batch. In any case, the authors got a lot of insightful feedback for their artifacts on how to improve this further. So even if you get uh, a batch rejected from the Artifact Evaluation Committee, you can still improve your, your artifact and this should not be held against the, the paper that submits it. So going forward, if you work in, uh, if you build any kind of prototype for your research, submit it to the artifact evaluation so that the committee can look at it, validate it, and that other people can build on top of it afterwards. Let me talk about some things you didn't know about NDSS 2024. Um, we did some number crunching, uh, running a bunch of scripts on analyzing the, the topics, details, and whatnot. As it turns out, uh, if you look at rejected papers by topic, uh, machine learning wins, right? So most rejected papers are in machine learning and AI in absolute numbers. But if you also look at absolute numbers, there's a lot of machine learning and AI paper, right? So we are seeing a massive influx uh, of these papers in our community. And that's in part uh, spurring the growth and the exponential growth that we are seeing in the number of submitted papers. Uh, next to that, we are, as we, we are seeing, especially when we look uh, at distributions over the years, we're becoming more inclusive by pulling in network privacy, anonymity papers, uh, and uh, user interface papers, and so on, uh, looking at it. So yeah, machine learning and AI is the most rejected uh, category. But then if you look on the flip side, right, uh, accepted papers by topic, machine learning and AI wins again, right? Because it's, it's just the largest group of paper that's out there. Um, but then after the, the top one, software, firmware analysis, and network privacy and anonymity, which tells us that these, uh, uh, that these two areas are, are kind of um, more amenable to, to publication here as, as reviewers tend to be more positive. Uh, and this can also be seen if you look at uh, acceptance rate by topic, right? Interestingly, but that's, uh, that's more an artifact of small numbers, um, network protocols had a 50% acceptance rate. Um, but again, small numbers, right? With small numbers, you can't really do good statistics. Uh, but for the others, it looks, uh, it looks a bit better. Uh, trustworthy computing, software firmware analysis had around a 30% acceptance rate, uh, and then it dropped down to, uh, to quite a bit. Um, if I were you, I would not work in anti-malware techniques, right? This is not a, uh, like it, it can be a super interesting research topic, but it's, got, it's an uphill battle to publish it. Um, but it can be published, right? <laughs> so if you get your paper rejected as a, as a student, right, rejoice. There is, a, there is at least some, some uh, br bright glimpse in the future. Now let's look at acceptance rates by, by country. Uh, and two countries stick out. Uh, we have 52 papers accepted from the United States, 
and 41 accepted from China. Right? So this has changed quite a bit. In previous years, this was like the, the big spike was mostly the United States, and then the tail uh, dropped down much, much, much faster. But the uh, submissions from China are almost on par to submission or, or accepted paper from the, uh, from the US. Which brings up another very, very sad fact. Uh, 13 papers out of 140 papers could not be presented by the authors due to rejected visas um, uh, for, the, for the US. So they got uh, in contact with, the, with the, the embassies over three months ago when the acceptance notifications were sent out, but their visas got rejected. And it's something that we'll have to look at as a community. Uh, 11 out of the 13 uh, authors or, or groups that had issues with the uh, with visa, with getting visas to the United States, were from uh, Chinese universities. And it's something that we'll, we'll have to consider as a community as well, how to handle the, the issues of, of travel and, uh, and visa that may complicate things going forward. Uh, acceptance rates by country, right? Uh, so Portugal and UK have a 33% acceptance rate for whatever they have submitted, which is almost double than, uh, than, than par. Right, so that's a, a very nice, uh, nice note as well. But again, uh, keep in mind small numbers. Um, acceptance papers by number of authors. Right, so we have a very broad distribution between uh, two and ten authors, and it peaks around uh, four and five, and then there's a there's a bunch more uh, with like eight plus authors. But we're clearly seeing an increase in the average number of authors going going forward since the last uh, last couple of years. Um, acceptance rate by the number of authors clearly tells us that you need to be eight authors to, uh, to, to get your paper accepted. Uh, the more authors, the better in general, but in any case, uh, don't be six, three, or two authors, right? <laughs> if need be, you can always add me. So next year, I'm no longer conflicted, right? So feel free to add me if you need to, to get around six, two or, uh, six, three, or two authors. Um, if you look at number of countries, right, collaborations across countries, um, 59 papers were written by all the members with affiliations in a single country. Uh, then we have uh, papers across two, three, and four countries. As you see, it gets harder to collaborate the more countries are, are being involved and the, the less likely. Uh, so most accepted authors have also, uh, mo most accepted papers have authors from only one country. Um, acceptance rate by the number of countries. Yeah, see, right? Maybe it, it works out fairly well if you, if you collaborate across four countries because you have a very high acceptance rate, right? So three times higher uh, acceptance rate for papers that collaborate between, uh, between the four countries. So if you're thinking about uh, NDSS 2025, right? Uh, taking the, the lessons from NDSS 2024. The hard way is, of course, have a brilliant idea, do the outstanding work, get interesting results, uh, write a great paper, a great storyline, uh, follow the CFP guidelines, or find eight or 10 co-authors in four different countries, write about network protocols or trustworthy computing, and move to Portugal or the UK, <laughs> right? That way you get your paper. Now, this could not be, would not be possible, this whole program would not be possible without our amazing PC members. So if you are on the PC, please stand up. Thank you very much. And I would like to give another thank to our artifact evaluators who did an equally uh, deserving job. <laughs> the papers, even if you don't see a lot of change in your, in your reviews, in the rebuttal, after the rebuttal or whatnot, they were massively discussed using a lot of comments, right, throughout the day. Uh, compared to earlier, we no longer see a big, uh, big difference or big pikes, uh, but comments are being added throughout the, the, the full day without too much of a, of a spike. Um, also, um, two people kind of stand out regarding the number of, uh, of comments for orchestrating. So you, you see a little bit of the work of the, of the PC chairs, 
that, uh, that push and get the, um, orchestrate the, the discussion as well with the, uh, with the different reviewers on the, on the papers. Christina already mentioned it. We've got an amazing program and we've got two amazing keynote speakers today and tomorrow. Today we'll hear from Meredith first uh, about some of the pitfalls and different issues we repeat from previous years. Tomorrow, um, Herbert will give uh, us some insights about um, memory corruption and different kind of uh, issues there. The program is spread across three days. As you may have seen, it's rather packed. We are in three rooms, three parallel sessions um, throughout the, uh, the different, uh, different times. Uh, join the session you like. Feel free to move across them. Be open, ask questions, ask nice questions, uh, and uh, we look forward to a great conference. I, will, I would now like to hand over the microphone to Mike. So thank you, and enjoy the program. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Mike Ryder, and I had the greatest job uh, of anybody at the conference, which was chairing the Test of Time Award Committee. Before I announced that, uh, the NDSS organizer did ask me to mention that there is an overflow room. So for all of you staying at the back, you're obviously welcome to do that. However, in this direction, aviary or something, there's a, another room if this one gets too crowded. And there are some chairs up front. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, I had the pleasure of chairing uh, a committee that um, uh, awards a test of time award paper. Uh, and the way the steering committee does this is a little bit interesting. They, give, they, they choose a chair, and then they let the chair choose the time frame from which the, the uh, award will be given, that is, how, you know, to what year you go back to. Um, and I chose uh, NDSS 2012. It looked to be a very target-rich environment, uh, and so thanks to all the authors for that year uh, for providing lots of fodder. Um, and and uh, so basically, I... I tried to put together a, a committee that was diverse across topic areas, uh, geographic regions, and lots of other uh, facets. And so you can see the committee here, and uh, they did a great job. I, I'm just super thrilled uh, with uh, their work on this, uh, this little project. The time frame for this was pretty condensed. Um, so we basically had a three-week nominating period where I basically charged the committee to go find the relevant papers uh, that they thought really stood out from NDSS 2012. Uh, and then we uh, sort of uh, set aside a week to discuss and uh, go dig up sort of their impacts on the community. Uh, we set up a, a hot CRP instance to manage any conflicts that would arise amongst the committee members and papers that had been nominated. Um, and uh, then we had a three-day period where people sent in private votes, uh, and I tallied up the, the, uh, the votes, and uh, there is a winner. So here it is. Um, smart, secure, and minimal architecture for establishing dynamic route of trust uh, by Kareem el Defrawi, uh, Defrawi, <laughs> sorry, Aurelien Francion, uh, Daniele Perito, and Jean Sudik. And so I would invite those authors who are here to please come up and receive a certificate. like a real surprise and at first I thought uh, this was a joke like a jest of time <laughs> and then I thought they have been around long enough and annoyed enough people that this is a pest of time award but really this is an acknowledgement of my amazing co-authors 
So three of them could not be here, so I take it on their behalf, but this was an amazing collaboration, and I thank them for it. Thanks again. Oh, right, so uh, I think uh, a student named Roman can accept the award for Aurelian. If you'd like to come and get a certificate, it'd be welcome. You.